Track and Packs video. I am your host, Miss Rivers. That's right, we're back again. Only this time, we're here with Pharos Beyond. Now, of course, we're not mentioning the last name of this set due to the YouTube algorithm and all that whatnot. Um, not that it's going to impact me too much due to the fact that, uh, you know, I don't think my videos get pushed out with the algorithm that often anyway. But, regardless, we're going to forego it if we can. Anyway, Theros, beyond. Sweet, sweet Theros. Who's ready to be back? I know I am. I really enjoyed it. So now what you're going to see here, this is the buy a box promo pack uh, that you get with the buy a box. It doesn't actually, now I'm going to open it up to show you what's in it. Um, I don't believe it is actually like randomized or anything like that. And by that I mean like it's randomized in the sense that the land you get in it is random I think okay so that's just like the card that does that so you're gonna get one of these Athreos right shrouded shroud veiled very beautiful pretty nice um, always gonna be foil this is basically your buy a box promo card just like what you get normally right but you also get a full art land in these packs now an interesting thing to note is that these were actually supposed to be foil lands, I believe, in these promo packs. So, um, let me get this off here. When I picked up my product, basically what happened was, you know, they give you one per box. So I got a case, so I got six. So they gave me one of each. They have the foils, so there they are. Look how beautiful they are. So they basically got little, like, packages of these foil lands. Uh, they did give me a sixth one as well. It was randomized. Um, but I did buy a box for a patron as well um, to open up for him. So I do have two that are randomized. Um, and I'm going to let him pick. I'm going to let the patron pick between the two that I got randomly that were, like, my random ones. Because his would have been random and it would have been the one that he got. Uh, for the one box, but because I got an extra random one, I'm like willing to just let him pick which one he wants out of the two. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. But anyway, so these are supposed to be foil. If they're not foil, your LGS should have got replacement product for these, as far as I understand, to then give out in replace. You know what I mean? Like they give you one of those in addition to this pack. So you're not, not only going to get one full art land, of the new lands, which look amazing, by the way. I really enjoy them. Yes, I get it. They don't have landscapes in them, and land is supposed to have landscapes. I get it. I don't care. Because this is on theme with sort of the whole Theros gods. Like, it's kind of like mystical and in space and all that whatnot. Anyway, interesting enough. You should be getting those as well. If you're not, you should have a discussion with your LGS. Okay. Now, your LGS may also be giving out certain things. I've heard some people saying that their LGS are giving away the collector's boosters as well. That is not something that Wizards is supporting this time. So if you got those, sweet. That means your LGS is doing you a solid by getting you that extra pack, basically for being a customer there, which is awesome. But Wizards didn't provide those packs this time to the LGSs to allow them to give them out. So, keep that in mind. Let's get into the first pack here. Starlet Mantle, Hero of Games, Leonid of the Lost Pride, Nylia's Forerunner, Soul Reaper of Mogus, Dreadful Apathy, Eidolon of Philosophy, Voracious Typho uh, Typhon, Wings of Hubris, Oh no, my hubris is showing. Scophos, war leader. And then we're into the uncommons here. Alright, so my understanding with these packs as well is that you cannot get the extended art or the showcase art commons in draft boosters.
Did the Theros packs or did the Throne of Eldraine? Hold on, I gotta get. I gotta look at this now. Hold on. I have some sitting here. No, they just said draft. Okay. Oh, they didn't say draft. I thought they were supposed to be saying draft on the packs now. See, like how this says 15 card booster pack on it. I thought this was supposed to be 15 card draft pack now, not booster pack. But, you know, maybe I'm just crazy. Maybe that was just like the promotional items that I saw. Anyway, Meyer Triton. So there you go. So here you go. This is what I was getting at. You can't get the common enchantment creatures in the showcase border, okay, in regular packs. You can get the uncommons in showcase border in regular packs. You can get foils of the showcase borders in regular packs. And this is just the same as the way Throne did it, as far as I understand. Right? So there's a showcase border that's kind of cool. Renata called to the hunt. Seems like a pretty sweet card, actually, for Mono Green. Um, cling to Dust with the little escape card there. And then our first rare is a Nadir Kraken. This card is actually really, really good in limited. I'm, I'm, in, I enjoy playing with it, and I hate playing against it in limited. Um, it's a two, three for three. That whenever you draw, you can pay one and put a one, one counter on it and make a one, one blue. So it just poops out one, one tokens every turn, and gets bigger when you draw. And then if you have ways to draw additional cards, it's just bonkers. Oh, cool. There's the reflection token. That's pretty nice. It's pretty neat. Oh, find stores and events where you are. Hey, that's an ad for finding an LGS as opposed to an ad for not needing a table to play. That's pretty good. So anyway, there you go. We got a swamp as our first. So I'm glad that the, um, the full art lands are in these packs, which is nice because I wanted to get a bunch of them. We'll just kind of quickly skim through the commons here now that we've talked about the commons and the all that stuff. Um, we got a Meyer Triton, the Birth of Miletus, Careless Celebrant. This is a pretty good card in limited as well. A 2 1 for 2 that when it dies, it does 2 damage is pretty good. Hey, there's our first temple, Temple of Plenty. Nice. Little uh, tap land. We'll take it. And then we got a Plains and a Gold Token. Sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. All right. I mean, we go through the commons quickly, right? I don't think there's any commons right now. I mean, the set's still pretty brand new. I don't think there's any commons that we need to be, like, keeping an eye out for for aspect of dollar value. We got a chain web... Arachnir? Arachnir? Arachnir. My goodness. Fateful End. Thundering Chariot. And... Oh, I'm happy with this because this is the deck that I want to brew. So I'm pretty stoked that I opened this in the in like the first box I'm opening up, uh, which is nice. Kroxa, Titan of Death's Hunger. I'll take it. And we got our first foil too. First foil is a Dreadful Apathy. And we got a Forest with a Pegasus token. All right. I hope you all have fun at the pre-release if you're going and if not i hope you enjoyed watching the early access streamer event or are enjoying theros beyond death on arena farika's spawn sea god's scorn favored uh favored of iroas and whoo all right back to back mythics and this is thassa thassa is the big the big dollar value in this set right now a nice these wolf tokens are pretty sweet looking too I have to say, Thassa is pretty bonkers. Sorry, we should go over these, I guess, in case for those of you out there. This is a brand new set. So, Kroxa, Titan of Death's Hunger. It's a 6-6 six, six for 2 mana. Uh, but when it enters... Uh, why is it not in focus? Why are you focusing, like, way the F down here? Okay, anyway. Uh, so, when Kroxa enters the battlefield, sacrifice it unless it escaped. When it enters the battlefield or ex or attacks, each opponent discards a card. Then each opponent who didn't discard a non-land card this way loses three life. And it escapes for four, exiling five creatures um, from your graveyard. Or five five cards from your graveyard, actually, not creatures. And then Thassa, Deep Dwelling, is a 6-5 legendary enchantment creature god for three and a blue with indestructible. And it says as long as your devotion to blue is less than five, it isn't a creature. So it becomes essentially just an enchantment. Um, at the beginning of your 
End step, exile up to one target creature you control, then return that cre card to the battlefield under your control. And then you can pay for to tap another creature. Which is pretty bonkers. Alright. I mean, those were two good packs back-to-back -back there, it looks like. I don't know what the uh, the deal is on the averages of seeing the showcase borders and stuff. Let's see. Don Evangel. Stinging Lungfish. Lionfish, I should say. Destiny Spinner. And what the heck is going on? How about another Mythic? There's Elspeth. Sun's Nemesis. All right. So uh, two and a white white for five loyalty planeswalker that says minus one up to two target creatures you control get plus two plus one until end of turn or minus two create two one one uh, white human soldier tokens or minus three you gain five life but it has escape for four and white white and exiling four cards from your graveyard okay and a mountain with a satyr all right <laughs> all right we're opening all of our mythics in the first few packs here. Which means the second half, like the se the second two thirds of this box are gonna be just super lackluster. Phalanx tactics, one with stars, hateful Eidolon, and a temple of enlightenment, another land, and we got another foil here. The foil is an omen of the forge. Pretty nice. We'll take it, and of course a plains and a goat token. Good old goats. The goats are back. Back again. Goats are back. Tell your friends. All right, uncommons. Elspeth's Nightmare. Timurit, chosen from death. Hydra's Growth. This card seems pretty interesting. And our rare is Dalakos, Crafter of Wonders. So it's a 2-4 for 3. One, a blue and a red that says, uh, tap to add... Two colorless mana. Spend this mana only to cast artifact spells or activate abilities of artifacts. Equipped creatures you control have flying and haste. Seems cool. Seems cool. Is it... Is it... Is it equip deck, I guess? Is it equipment deck? I guess there's going to be like some... Like they're going to give Boros a run for their money now, I guess. Is the idea. Firica's uh, spawn... Laguna Band Storyteller, Warden of the Chained, and Phoenix of Ash. There you go. 2-2 two, two Flying Haste for 3 mana, 1 in a red red, and it says it has basically really crappy fire breathing. 2 in a red to get plus 2 plus 0 until end of turn. However, it has an escape for 2 in uh, red red and exiling 3 cards. But when it escapes, it escapes with a 1-1 counter on it, so it becomes a 3-3 with flying in haste and worse fire breathing. We got a nice zombie token there. All right. Let's see what else we find here. So far, only one storyboarder card. Three mythics, though. Anax, hardened in the, in the forge. Thundering chariot. Escape velocity. And Storm Herald. Did an interesting brew with this during the... Um, uh, early access event, uh, thanks to one of my viewers, um, and, uh, it was interesting, I think it needed to be tweaked a bit more, but it was interesting, it was like a try to get your enchantments into the trash as quickly as possible to drop a Storm Herald and just, like, smash in for a ton of damage, so it was interesting, uh, Reverend Hoplite, Mischievous Chimera, Underworld Dreams, I'm so happy that they reprinted this card, because I love this card, I actually have a deck that, like, one of the first decks I built in the last, well, I should say, like, not one of the first decks I built, but, like, one of the decks I built when I got back into Magic about six years or seven years ago was this deck, and I love it still to this day, and it's basically like a group hug deck where everybody draws, but er but all my opponents take damage uh, for drawing. It's it's fun. We got a second copy of Dalakos. All right, and another foil, Foil Plummet with a Mountain. And a goat. Totes my goats, as they say. Totes my goats. Fateful End. Cling to Dust. Glimpse of Freedom. And Temple of Abandon. Alright. Plains and Satyr token. Or Satyr token. Right? It's a, it's a Satyr, right? 
just it's a satyr i get it i know listen it's fine wolf willow haven furious rise the binding of titans and taranika a crowan veteran vigilance three three for three one in a white white that says uh whenever Terranika, a crone veteran, attacks, untap another target creature you control until end of turn. That creature has base power and toughness 4-4 four, four, and gains indestructible. Interesting. I feel like that would be interesting with uh, the Gideon, right? From War, right? Where you can give it indestructible and then swing with it and then untap another thing you're swinging with and give it indestructible and make it a 4-4. Four, four. Seems interesting. Devourer of Memory. Shimmer, uh, Shimmerwing Chimera. Soul Guide Lantern. This card's going to be uh, sought after for sure in Limited. Um, just because it's basically graveyard hate and there's a lot of stuff in the graveyard. Thassa's Oracle. I've seen a lot of people wanting to build around this and just jam this card all the time. This card is pretty hilarious. So it's a 1-3-4 blue-blue. It says, when it enters the battlefield, uh, look at the top X cards of your library, where X is your devotion to blue. Put up to one of them onto the top of your on top of your library, and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. If X is greater than or equal to the number of cards in your library, you win the game. Ooh, we got a foil of the story border, or whatever you want to call it, extended art nonsense. Showcase? Showcase art. That's what they're calling it. Calafi, Beloved of the Sea. So this is the blue demigod. So I'm going to put it there, even though it's a foil. I'm going to put it with the with the showcase borders, because that's where we're trying to keep track of how many we get in a box. And I, even though the foils technically don't count toward that, I guess. Shoal Kraken. Ut uh, Utropia, the twice favored. Sage of Mysteries. And our rare is Archon of Sun's Grace. This card seems interesting too. Really good in limited. It's a 3-4 flyer for 4 with flying and lifelink, which is already bonkers as it is. However, it also says Pegasus creatures you control have lifelink. But then on top of that, it's like whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, create a 2-2 white Pegasus creature with flying. Not only flying, but flying and lifelink if this card's on the battlefield. We got another foil here. Nylia's Huntmaster. And then a forest and a... Oh, we got our first junk... Got our first junk token. Which says you don't need a table still. Furious Rise. Wolf Willow Haven. The Binding of the Titans. And Timurit Calls the Dead as our rare. Pretty sweet little rare here. This is interesting. So it's a saga. It says put the top three cards of your library into your or into your graveyard. Then you may exile a creature or enchantment card from your graveyard. If you do, create a 2-2 zombie token. Then the third stage is you gain X life and scry X, where X is the number of zombies you control. And we got another foil. One with the stars. One with the stars. An island and a satyr. All right. Let's motor along here so that we don't make this video like, you know, 30 minutes long. Let's hope. Impending Doom. Staggering Insight. Clothis. De Clothis's Design. And Galia. Galia of the Endless Dance. This card is very good in Limited. Uh, I'm sure it will be good outside of Limited as well. Just because it's a 2 2 Haster, right? That makes your satyrs bigger. And the satyr, like making your satyrs bigger, isn't even the biggest draw. The biggest draw of this card is the draw mechanic, which is whenever you attack with three or more creatures, you may discard a card at random if you do draw two cards. So it's it's a better looting mechanic because it draws you two instead of only one, right? We Sorry, we had Heliod's Punishment, uh, Dream Stalker, Manticore, and Mirror Shield. And then our, our rare is Setison Champion. This card is bonkers. It's a 1-3 three for 3 that says whenever an enchantment enters battlefield under your control, put a 1-1 one -one counter on it and draw a card, which is just really good. We got a foil vexing gull here with a little 2-2 two -two flash flying bird. Definitely gets there sometimes. Ooh, we got the 8-8 eight -eight hexproof kraken token. That's from the rare uh, Kiora bests the sea god or something like that. I think that's what the one is from. All right. Citizen Petitioner, 
Skofos Maze Warden, Minions Return, and Ashiox Erasure. This card is interesting. I don't know how I feel about it yet. I had it played against me a few times during the Early Access event. It's interesting. It's interesting. And we got a foil favored of Iroas. And the reason it's interesting... Oh, we got the 04 wall. The reason it's interesting is because it's an enchantment that exiles the spell. So it's like it counters the spell off the stack, but it exiles it. And then if the enchantment ever leaves play, they get it back to their hand. Now, the thing that's interesting about it is that it prevents them from casting other spells with the same name, which is good. But at the same time, if they have a way to remove it, they get that spell back and then can now cast those spells again. So it's kind of like a... You know, it's a counterspell, but only a conditional counterspell. Now, it does add to your enchantment count and things like that, which matters. And it does trigger your constellations, which is good. So, like, it will it might see play in, like, a green-blue flash deck that plays the constellation stuff. I don't know. Anyway, we got uh, Khalifi, Beloved of the Sea, in uh, the Showcase Border, which is nice. Mystic Repeal. We got si uh, Siona, or Siona, Captain of Pylees. And we got the Mantle of the Wolf. This is one of the enchantments that seems to be uh, creeping up in people's lists. It uh, gives plus four, plus four for four mana, which is really good. But then when it leaves play, it makes two, two, two wolves. Which means that you basically just get some sort of like... It's kind of like a pseudo-bestow type enchantment, right? Whereas instead of getting the creature that you bestow, you get two wolves of equal power, toughness combined to the four, four that you were giving. Uh, Ferris Band Brawler. Uh, Illyrius Entrapped, Enraptured, Enraptured, Illyrius Enraptured, my goodness, that's the one that makes the token we got in the first pack, Sage of Mysteries, and Eidolon of Obstruction, this card is really good if you can slam it on turn one, or turn two I should say, it's a 2-1 first striker that makes their loyalty abilities uh, cost more, so not a bad little one there, planes and a spider token, little 1-2 spider token, all right, Heroes of the Revel, Commanding Presence, Underworld Fires, and Storm's Wrath. Little, this is an interesting one. Sorcery, 4 mana. Deals 4 damage to each creature and each Planeswalker. Um, it definitely wipes some walkers off the board, that's for sure. We got our sweet foil full art swamp out of this pack. So that's pretty nice. And we got a Planes, and ooh, we got the Nightmare token from Ashiok. All right. We hit some decent mythics early on in this box, that's for sure. But you can see, like, we're now almost all the way through the second third of, or the second third of this box, and we haven't hit a single mythic. Uh, Alice Seed of Life's Bounty, Agonizing Remorse, Clothius's Design, and Labyrinth of Skophos, with another foil, foil Mystic Repeal, and a Forest and a Wolf token. Labyrinth of Skophos is basically like similar to like a Maze of Ith, only like more expensive. Costs four to remove them from combat. But the thing that's interesting about it is it doesn't untap them. Banishing Light. This is a reprint from the original uh, Theros block. Very good removal enchantment in limited. Nyx Herald. Careless Celebrant. And uh, Kunoros. Kunoros. Hound of Atheros. Athreos. Athreos. That's the one. My goodness. My pronunciation is just like out the window. It's just like, did you were you trying to say words and read letters? In the order that they're printed, too bad. Your brain's gonna say this instead. Staggering Insight, Chainweb Arachnir, Mirror Shield, and Underworld Breach. This card seems interesting. I really want to experiment with it. Um, I had it in one of my sealed pools, and I was like, I want to play it and test it out, and um, it. <laughs> It doesn't really work out until, like, really late game. Whirlwind Denial. So this is the uncommon that everyone's chasing from this set. Um, it's worth, like, a couple bucks. Um, but just because it counters the stack, which is pretty crazy. Glimpse of Freedom. Field of Ruin. Reprint from Ixalan. People are probably glad to see this back. And we got a Woe Strider. Woe Strider. All right. Can we find another mythic? We found three at the beginning and then none since. Impending Doom, Underworld Dreams, uh, Medoma's, Medomai's Prophecy, and Nylia's, or Ni Nylia's Intervention. With a Swamp and an Elemental Token. 
Now, again, I'm not talking about prices or anything like that really too much with these rares because it's still early. Um, the prices are going to fluctuate quite a bit. Hero of Nyxborn, Escape Velocity, Daxos, Blessed by the Sun, and Arasta the Endless Web. That's the one that makes the spider tokens. Really good in limited. 3-5 with reach for 4 mana. And whenever an opponent casts an instant or sorcery spell, you create a 1-2, which is pretty awesome. Uh, Mischievous Chimera, Banishing Light again. Inevitable End, and hey, Dryad of uh, Elysian Grove. Very good. Very nice. That's the one that people are excited about because it you know, lets you play extra lands. Makes your lands make all the manas, all the different types and stuff. Another Whirlwind Denial, good. Rise to Glory. Dream Shaper Shaman, and the Acroan War. Little, another saga, this time the saga in red. And we got just a island and another junk token. So we're short a mythic here, and we haven't hit a foil rare. We've also only hit two showcase cards out of this uh, box, which is interesting. Gary! It's Gary! I mean, Grey Merchant. I'm so happy that it's back. Blood Aspirant, Nessian Wanderer, and Elspeth's, Elspeth Conquers Death. This is an interesting one. This one's really cool, but it's, you know, it's a big threat that people are going to just remove. And because there's so much enchantment hate in this set, it's going to be hard to get it to go off. Ooh, we got a foil uh, temple. That's pretty nice. There's our foil rare for the box, Temple of Deceit. Very nice. All right, I'll take a foil temple. People are going to, you know, people don't like the temples right now because they're tap lands. But people need to realize that once guilds, uh, like once Ravnica rotates, this is going to be what you got. This is going to be what you got. Slaughter Priest of Mogus. Drag to the Underworld. Triumph of Anax. And... Atris, Oracle of Half-Truths. I haven't even seen this card yet, so it's a 3-2 for 4, 2 and a blue-black with Menace, and it says whenever it enters the battlefield, target opponent looks at the top three cards of your library and separates them into a into face-down pile and face-up pile. Put one pile into your hand and the other pile into your graveyard. Interesting. And a mountain and a junk card. All right. We're still short one mythic. Oh, my goodness. What's happened here? Come back, camera. There we go. I don't know why it does this. Sometimes the camera's just like, by the way, I'm just going to turn off. And it just turn Like, it doesn't even turn off. It just shuts off the feed for whatever reason. Like, it's just like, oh, the feed's just gone. The camera's still on. Like, what, what you heard there, the beeping and stuff, wasn't the camera turning back on. It was just the camera. Like, anyway, I'm sorry. If you missed it, we got Atris right over here. Uh, but anyway, we're back to the next pack. En Enemy of Enlightenment. I don't even know how long that was out for because I wasn't watching the screen. <laughs> Thronody Singer. And Hactos the Unscarred. So this is the sixth one that's like uh, it comes in and you pick a number, right? Yeah. Enters Battlefield. Choose two, three, or four at random. It gains protection from con from each converted mana cost other than the chosen one, which is interesting. People are interesting about it because they're like, aha, I can bring it back. To the graveyard or from the graveyard and stuff and then not have to like pick a like play it with hushbringer and then you don't have to pick a number and it's like yeah but you realize that that means that then it doesn't get protected from anything right because it says it has protection from each converted mana cost other than the chosen number and if you don't choose a number it has protection from nothing uh acolyte of affliction daxos blessed by the sun utropia the twice favored and temple of deceit all right with a mountain and another junk token. All right, three packs left. Three packs left, everybody. As I knock over my pile over there. Archon of the Falling Stars, Medoma's Prophecy, Nessian Hornbeetle, and Ox of Agonus. Ox of Ogonus. Argonus? Agonus. And that's our mythic right there. 4-2 for 5. That says, uh, when it enters battlefield, discard your hand and draw three cards. Ox of Agonis escapes with three 1-1 one -one counters on it. So it escapes for two, but exiling eight other cards. The idea being that when you play it, because you discard your hand, you're going to discard probably like, you know, 
three or more cards is kind of the idea, I think. Hero of the Nextborn. Shoal Kraken. Field of Ruin again. Nice. And, ooh! Wow. All right. How about a, how about a Showcase Clothis God of Destiny? So we got a fifth mythic, and it's a Showcase mythic. That's kind of cool. So this is a three mana, four, five. For one, a red and a green that's, a, that's indestructible, and it says, As long as your devotion to red and green is less than seven, it's not a creature. At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, exile target card from a graveyard. If it was a land card, add a red or a green. Otherwise, you gain two life and Clotho deals two damage to each opponent. That card seems sweet. That card seems sweet. Oh, I've knocked over everything. And by that, I mean I knocked over a few cards. Last pack. I was not expecting another Mythic out of this box. Be completely honest. Dawn Evangel. Sea Gods Scorn. Hero of the Winds. And what's the last pack hold for us? Nessian Boar. Big Pig. The Big Pig is here. The 8. The 10 8. Or the 10 6. The 10 6. That says all creatures able to block it do so. And when it becomes blocked by a creature, that creature controller draws a card. Um. So, like, we got some interesting stuff out of this box. I would say that the number of showcase cards out of one box is pretty lackluster, actually. So, like, we only got three, if you count it properly, right? Like, we did get a foil one, so we technically got four out of this box, but I feel like the foil slot doesn't count toward um, the count of how many you get per box. And so, like, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine... 10, 11 foils, which is which is a little bit lower than what we were seeing at a throne as well. Like we were seeing 12 minimum. So it's interesting to see the, you know, I mean, this is only the first box, so I can't really base an average or anything like that. We hit some really good mythics out of this box. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, hitting the showcase mythic is pretty awesome as well. And getting a foil temple of deceit is awesome as well. Um, but I think the showcase cards, I was expecting to see like maybe like five to seven somewhere in that range. Um, but I guess that, you know, I guess maybe the number of showcase cards in this set are lower than the others. Again, I haven't opened up any collector's boosters or anything like that yet either because those aren't out yet. Um, so I don't know what to find in those because that whole thing with Throne was a big mess of things of trying to figure out what was in it and what wasn't. There was a lot of information out there that was, you know, that people thought they got it right and then they didn't. And then people thought they got it wrong, and but then they did have it right. And it was just a big cluster jam of information of or lack thereof of information so anyway thank you so much everyone for watching i know this was in a long haul it was my first box so i took a little bit longer because i like to read the cards and check them out and i haven't looked at really any spoilers or anything so that, you know i see a few things here and there when i play in the early access event and that kind of stuff but other than that i don't really see a lot of the cards because I don't go looking for them um so when I open them up here I go oh what's that do oh what's this do and it takes me a little longer and it gets me talking so you know I hope you enjoyed my rambling if not you know feel free to dislike the video if you did enjoy the rambling make sure you give it a thumbs up don't forget you can like share and subscribe the video it would greatly help me uh out um, and if you want to help support the channel, you can do so over on my Patreon at patreon.com slash mrbevers, where you can get cards every month. Basically, most of my magic levels give out some sort of package of cards every month, along with some other stuff. And most of my patrons who are in those tiers have been pretty happy with what they've gotten. At least, I think most of them anyway. I mean, they can, they can vouch for it, and they can leave a comment on this video and let you know whether they enjoy it or not, or whether they like it. Um, but I think most people are happy with the stuff they get on a monthly basis which is nice. I'm, that's basically what I'm aiming for with the Patreon. I want to make sure that they're getting back value in cards based on what they're putting in. So uh, I hope you all enjoyed. And as always, may your pulls ever be better.